dead. The car took off. Allie says I held on to the windshield wipers. I was like on outside of a car going 40 miles an hour. They swerved and like threw me off the car. Allie suffered no serious injuries. She began a desperate search for Onyx, offering thousands in reward money, describing distinctive features like his two different colored eyes. He has one blue eye and one green eye. The license plate of the white Kia was covered up, but Allie seems hopeful. She's gotten what she called a tip. I just like feel lost and lonely without him, and he's my buddy, he's my wingman. And she was literally his wingman. Jeannie Mos, CNN, New York. I think I would do the same thing if my dog was kidnapped. I probably would get on top of that car and chase after him. <laughs> well, coming up in our next hour of Good Morning Northwest, the first deadline for the 2024 legislative session has passed. We'll tell you which bills could be headed to your ballot coming up. And, and SWAT was called to an hours long standoff yesterday as authorities tracked a suspect who managed to escape last week. And meteorologist Tiffany Savona has your full weather forecast. Good Morning Northwest starts right now. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good Morning Northwest on your side. Good morning and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. The time is 6 a.m. on Thursday, February 1st. Happy first day of February. Let's start by checking in on our weather. Let's say hello to meteorologist Tiffany Savona. Tiffany, is that rain going to go away anytime soon? No, it's going to linger today, Jessica, but we're not going to see nearly as much rain as what we saw yesterday. So there's the silver lining. And since it's February 1st, I know a lot of you probably counting down to Valentine's Day, 13 days away, daylight saving time, 38 days away when we spring forward, 47 days until spring begins, and 59 days until Easter. I know a lot of you folks start thinking of the springtime once we get into the month of February. As we take a look at the radar, we do have a couple of spotty showers out there across the Tri-Cities and back into the foothills of the Blues. But the Yakima Valley drying things out right now. And that's where we do have some patchy fog that has developed and reduced visibility to now a quarter of a mile in Yakima. We're up to a mile in Ellensburg and Prosser back down to about a quarter of a mile. So visibility fluctuating from Prosser all the way into the Yakima Valley. So keep that in mind if you're traveling to or from those areas. Temperatures, look at Walla Walla, dropping big time. Now we're at 51 degrees, 43 in the Tri-Cities, 39 in Prosser, 39 degrees in Yakima. So here's that forecast. Scattered showers will be possible on and off throughout the day today. High temperatures in the Tri-Cities, lower 50s. But the weekend is looking better, I promise. Drier, we'll have the full forecast and your seven-day coming up. Jessica, back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. Yesterday was the first deadline of the 2024 legislative session in Washington, which meant it was do or die for many bills. Any bill that wasn't voted out of committee is effectively done for the year. Apple Valley News Now's Alyssa Warner has been tracking dozens of bills, but the number is about to be a lot smaller. State lawmakers can propose anything they want, but there's no guarantee that those proposals will get a hearing. My encouragement to my colleagues across the aisle is there's no harm in having a discussion in Olympia on this. That's Representative Sam Lowe speaking ahead of the session about his proposal, making it a crime to use fentanyl in public. That proposal never even got a public hearing. Neither did a bill that would have made it so that people applying for jobs in addiction treatment centers could be required to pass a drug test before being hired. House Bill 1903, which would require you to report it if your guns are lost or stolen, is in pretty good shape. But 1902, which would require a permit in order to purchase a gun, never made it to a committee vote. We've been tracking Senate Bill 5773, sponsored by District 15 Senator Nikki Torres. That bill would have required the state to provide a bigger share of the funding for Office of Public Defense, something Franklin County officials say is desperately needed. That bill stalled in the Senate Law and Justice Committee, something Senator Torres told me at the beginning of this month was not unexpected. We will see how much traction this bill actually gets, um, hopefully gets some good traction. A proposal that would ask voters to change the state constitution so that school bonds pass with a simple majority support rather than the 60 percent approval required right now is still advancing. House Bill 1961, which would make first degree animal cruelty a felony crime, is actually ahead of schedule. It's already passed a House vote and is now making its way through the Senate. 
For Apple Valley News Now, I'm Alyssa Warner. Thank you, Alyssa. Also, the committee opted not to take action on House Bill 2027, which would have required anybody elected as sheriff to pass a background check. And an hours long standoff in Bend County ended in one man's arrest. Nobody was hurt, but authorities say the man they arrested was wanted by a couple of different agencies. Around 3.30 yesterday afternoon, authorities were called to a home off of East Jacobs Road Northeast for reports of a man possibly armed with a gun. Bend County Sheriff's Office Lieutenant Mike Clark says authorities had a tip that a man who had gotten away from them last weekend after crashing a car was at the home. He fled from one of our deputies uh, shortly down the road. He had wrecked, fled from there. They located a gun at that point. Um, ultimately, once they came out here and confirmed uh, he was here, they were notified that he was wanted out of Kenwick as well for um, a robbery months ago. According to Clark, the man did have a gun, but he surrendered just before 6.30 p.m. He's facing charges for eluding and possession of a firearm. Clark says he may also face a robbery charge out of Kennewick. And a robbery yesterday afternoon led to a pursuit in West Richland. According to West Richland Police, the suspect arrived at a home on Gross Cup Boulevard and North uh, 62nd Avenue, claiming he was supposed to work on the home. Officers say the man allegedly hurt an elderly resident as he pushed his way into the home and allegedly fled with personal items. Two canines were used to search and find the suspect, who officers say had numerous items belonging to the victim. The victim received medical attention, but is doing well. The city of Richland has been searching for a replacement after their former chief of police stepped down at the beginning of the year. City officials announced two finalists earlier this month and introduced them to the community. But yesterday afternoon, the city of Richland announced recruiting for the city's police chief will continue. Richland city manager is quoted saying in part, I have determined that Richland's best option is to continue recruiting for the role. I believe it's necessary to continue the process to ensure that we select the best organizational fit for the police department and community. You can find more on the story and Joe Amundsen's full quote on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. Straight ahead on Good Morning Northwest, a group of the nation's top social media executives faced intense questioning during a Senate hearing about the mental health risks their enormously popular platforms pose for young people. Taking a look at SkyCam, temperature is now 43 degrees and winds are at 5 miles per hour. But don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more headlines right after this. Let a Mattress Depot USA sleep specialist put you on the mattress that matches your sleeping habits. Stop by today. You'll sleep better tonight. Low prices every day. Mattress Depot USA. Prepare to be swept off your feet at Legends Casino Hotel in February. Win a chance to play the Planet Love Game Board every Thursday, and you could claim up to $25,000. Who needs a crummy box of chocolates or bouquet of wilted flowers when you can score between $1,500 and $25,000 just by using your Legends Rewards card to earn entries? Come on, do you really want all that romance stuff in February or a big wad of lustful loot? Land on Planet Love at Legends Casino Hotel for a chance to win thousands. Meet David Silva of Athena, Oregon. You're doing something the others aren't doing. He's an Apple Valley News Now viewer. The folks, the faces that you have, they're friendly, they're easy to listen to. And a Stacy Lee fan. Stacy Lee covers the whole basin. It's nice to turn on the TV. Good Friday evening to you. And know that we're going to hear the weather of Walla Walla and Pendleton. From the blues to the Cascades. First alert weather with Stacy Lee. She's there for all of us. On your side. You were nominated for Volunteers Count, and you won it, and you've got yourself a $1,000 donation from STCU. For a small organization like us, that um, that is not an insignificant amount of money. I'm more of a behind-the-scenes person, so when I do get the recognition for the stuff that I do, it's like very rewarding. She was just the perfect person. STCU Volunteers Count honors volunteers in our communities. Please tell us a story of someone you believe is making an impact. 
Take off for an air adventure over Idaho's oldest ski area. High quality snow, averaging over 400 inches a year. Fly the Northwest over Lookout Pass. We've got one of the longest natural half pipes called Rolling Thunder. Apple Valley News Now at 6, Tuesday. Next live, Catherine O'Hara. Early on, if you'd say, I think I should go for this really cool, like, edgy cut, I'm like, do it, babe. He encouraged me to get a Carol Brady. <laughs> Today at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. We're celebrating President's Day all month long with Star Spangled Savings. But hurry, these presidential prices won't last long. Low prices every day. Mattress Depot USA. This newscast sponsored by Mariano Morales Law. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. In a hearing on Capitol Hill now, senators accuse tech giants of failing to protect children from abuse online, including that from sexual predators, suicide, eating disorders, and bullying. The chief executives promising to do more, and in an unexpected moment, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg apologizing to parents in the room who say the platforms harmed their, ch uh, their children. ABC's M. Wynn has the latest. The chief executives of Meta, X, TikTok, Snap and Discord grilled in a tense Senate Judiciary Committee hearing on the dangers of social media for children. You have blood on your hands. You have a product. You have a product that's killing people. Senators accused the tech CEOs of failing to protect their most vulnerable users. Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg repeatedly saying his job was to build industry-leading tools and empower parents. At the back of the room, grieving families held up images of their kids they say took their own lives because of abuse on these platforms. In a rare public apology, Zuckerberg turned around and faced them. And this is why we invested so much and are going to continue doing industry leading efforts to, uh, to make sure that no one has to go through the types of things that your families have had to suffer. Meta announced earlier this month it has beefed up its child safety features and has started hiding inappropriate content from teenagers' accounts and restricting minors' abilities to receive messages from anyone they aren't connected to. But Brandon Guffey, a father at the hearing who blames Instagram for his son's death by suicide after he was sexually exploited, says the companies still aren't doing enough. Your actions speak louder than words. So there's nothing that you can say until you start implementing these changes. The committee last year approved several bills, including one that would remove tech firms' immunity from certain civil or criminal liability, but so far, none have become law. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, the Yakima County prosecutor has come to a decision on whether to prosecute the man who shot and killed another man at a dog park last February. And taking a look at SkyCam, temperature is still 43 degrees. I will take that for February. But meteorologist Tiffany Savona will have more on the weather in that first alert full forecast when we come back. Were you involved in the assassination of Malcolm X? Of course not. The award-winning interview after being exonerated in the murder of Malcolm X. Exonerated tonight after the series premiere of MLK X on ABC. Spectrum Mobile brings you our best deal to start the new year. Now you can get unlimited mobile for $15 per line. That's right, only $15 a month per line. It's our best price on unlimited mobile. Switch now and save over $1,400 for the first year with Spectrum Mobile, the nation's fastest growing mobile provider. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for just $15 per line with no added taxes or hidden fees and no contracts. Call 855-204-1678 or visit a Spectrum store near you. With Spectrum Mobile, you get a fast, reliable 5G network that millions of customers rely on. And you get the fastest wireless speeds with unlimited data to stream all day and the freedom to text and talk all you want. Plus nationwide 5G at no additional cost. All this for $15 a line with no added taxes or hidden fees. Start saving over $1,400 on your mobile bill now. Switch to Spectrum Mobile Unlimited for just $15 per line with no added taxes or hidden fees and no contracts. Call 855-204-1678 or visit a Spectrum store near you. Vegas action is closer than you think. The fun is waiting for you at Knob Hill Casino. Come in and pull up a chair at your choice of blackjack, 
Pi Gow. Heads up hold them or high card flush and play with the friendliest dealers in town. Join our players club to take your game to the next level and earn rewards for food, bowling, prizes, and cash. There's always a spot for you at Knob Hill Casino where the locals play. Next DT. Music's biggest star still chasing Grammy gold. I thought it was a joke. Plus, only we're on set of Night Court for the Big Bang Theory reunion. Max E.T. Tonight at 7 on Apple Valley News Now. Yeah. Welcome back to the house that Ava built. Y'all ain't missing nothing. Come on, y'all. Come on. I ate that. I consumed it. Oh, my God. Everybody move. Sexily. Shocking. You yeah. I've got to go save the school. Well, at this point, you're probably asking yourself, how did you get elected to the state senate? Yes. You guys missed a lot. Abby. This back. That's right. I'm back, y'all. Yes. Yes. Welcome back. Operation Best Friend on Good Morning Northwest, sponsored by Windermere Group One. From Apple Valley News Now, First Alert Weather with Tiffany Savona. Good morning. It was a rainy day yesterday. We saw a couple of showers overnight, but as expected, the rain did not amount to much across the region. Yakima picked up the most. 0.28 inches of rain. Tri-Cities and Pendleton about 13 hundredths of an inch and in Walla Walla just two hundredths of an inch of rain and these totals will come up just a little bit during the day today as we track some scattered light rain showers across the region. Right now a lot of the activity from the Tri-Cities and points off to the east and that's where the best chances for rain will be, but keep in mind, it's not going to rain all day at any one location. We have a little bit of light rain into Benton City, also to the north of Hermiston, just kind of hovering around the Tri-Cities area and back toward the west. So Walla Walla, Dayton, it's a little bit more steady, but it is on the light side. We're taking a live look out of our Richland camera. Visibility looks pretty good, but roads are wet, so take it easy. Sunrise officially here. 7:20 and sunset now after five o'clock. So the days or the daylight hours getting longer and longer as we approach the start of spring. Here are the visibilities where we are seeing the rain. Visibility is in good shape, but where we aren't seeing the rain, like Prosser, Yakima, that is where visibility has dropped below a quarter of a mile. So take it easy if your travels take you in that direction or out of those areas this morning. Colder air starting to push in. Walla Walla, you were close to 60 at the top of the hour. Now you're down to 51. That's because winds have shifted more out of the west with that weak boundary moving through. We're down to 46 in Dayton, 47 in Hermiston, 43 in the Tri-Cities, and 39 in Yakima, 36 in Ellensburg. So there's that weak boundary pushing through the region. It looks like the shower chances, like I mentioned, best chance will be from the Tri-Cities and points off to the east today. But even then, the rain will be light and scattered at best, with high temperatures in the lower 50s for many of us. Upper 40s back toward Yakima, 52 in the Tri-Cities, 53 in Hermiston, and middle 50s across the foothills of the Blues. Tonight, the showers will start to diminish in coverage. Can't rule out a spotty shower here or there. And tomorrow morning, this computer model has a few lingering light rain showers across the Tri-Cities, but after tomorrow morning, we're gonna be looking drier across the entire region as we wrap up the week and head into the weekend. So overnight, temperatures in the upper 30s to near 40 degrees, and then tomorrow, we're mostly cloudy across the region. A couple of showers possible out toward Pendleton and Walla Walla. There may even be a few breaks of sunshine the farther west you go. Wouldn't that be nice? High temperatures tomorrow in the Tri-Cities around 50 degrees. And then we cool down a little bit as we head into the upcoming weekend. But it's still not going to be bad since we're looking dry and the wet weather returns next week. Yakima 49 today looking better tomorrow 50. And then the weekend mid to upper 40s with lows getting close to the freezing mark. Walla Walla, good chance for rain today. We'll keep that chance for some scattered activity tomorrow. And then the weekend looking a little bit cooler, but drier before more rain pushes in next week. Hermiston, scattered showers today, 53. A slight chance in the morning tomorrow. Otherwise, we're drying things out. 48 Friday, 46 on Saturday, and 46 on Sunday. Jessica, back to you. 
Thank you, Tiffany. In a big story now, we're getting some answers from the prosecutor's office nearly a year after an unarmed man experiencing a mental health crisis was shot and killed in a Yakima dog park. Yakima County Prosecutor Joe Brusick has decided not to file criminal charges in this case. Apple Valley News Now's Emily Goodell got the chance to talk to Brusick about his decision. We're not naming the shooter here as he hasn't been charged with a crime, but Brusick says after looking at all the evidence and the state's self-defense laws, he came to the conclusion that if it went to trial, a jury would accept an argument for self-defense and find him not guilty. It's very easy for anyone in the community or law enforcement or anybody to look at Monday morning quarterbacking and to determine that he could have done various things. It's exactly what we hear in officer involved shootings. But Brusick says in self defense cases, they have to look at objective standards of what a reasonable person would do in that situation. And you'd also look at what in this particular case, Mr. Tellis looked at subjectively at the time that this incident unfolded before him with his child. In the early afternoon on February 5th, 2023, multiple witnesses called 911 saying a man, Ortega, was trying to talk to people, cussing, yelling about a gun and acting erratically as if he was experiencing a mental health crisis or was on drugs. Authorities say Ortega then approached the man and his child, yelling about the child and refusing to leave, and the man pulled out his gun. At the point where he was shot just prior to that, he was about three Three feet away, which is exceptionally close. Ortega died at the park nearly a year ago, but the decision just sent to law enforcement on Tuesday. We waited for the toxicology reports and those took a couple months. Um, and then just the sheer workload that I have and that we all have in terms of evaluating the case. Um, my apologies for obviously not getting this done sooner. Brusick says he included all the information relevant to his charging decision in his letter to law enforcement, but it doesn't say much about Ortega himself what he was going through at the time, how his death impacted his family, or how, in the middle of a mental health crisis, he ended up at that park in the first place. I've previously spoken with Ortega's family about his case and their struggle to understand the whole picture. In Yakima, Emily Goodell, Apple Valley News Now. Emily has uncovered new details on this case after filing a public records request with law enforcement. We're hoping to air that exclusive on Monday, February 5th, one year since Ortega's death. And when we return on Good Morning Northwest, the Benton County Fairgrounds is looking to expand on the kinds of events they hold. We'll tell you how they plan to do that coming up next. Apple Valley News Now forecaster Stacy Lee. We're constantly looking ahead for the next weather event, so we'll all know what's coming before it arrives. And our local experience is the difference. First alert weather from Apple Valley News Now. Always on your side. It's the seven day winter sale at Furniture Row. So get ready because every sofa, dining table and bed is on sale. Like this unbeatable deal on the bearing panel bed, now only $5.99. Save big on the Centurion sofa, only $6.99. Get the Largo dining table for only $3.99. And check out the Summit Queen, now only $2.99.99. Plus, four years no interest financing. But don't wait. The seven-day winter sale at Furniture Row ends Thursday the 1st. In the heart of Tri-Cities Wine Country, you'll find the Goose Ridge Richland Tasting Room. Located in the center of our vineyards is an opportunity to enjoy life through wines, hard ciders, Monson Ranch spirits, light bites, and live music at Goose Ridge. More than you'd expect, more than just a winery. It's the Stay and Ski Giveaway as Apple Valley News Now and Schweitzer Mountain Resort give away two nights and four lift tickets to Schweitzer. Check the contest page at Apple Valley News Now for your chance to win. Stay and Ski from Schweitzer Mountain Resort and Apple Valley News Now. Everybody has a beginning story. I couldn't do this without my sister. <sighs> this is why we do this for. You make dreams come true. Home is where the dream starts. Anything is possible when you have the courage to chase your dreams. American Idol is where the dream takes off. It's going to make people stop 
and watch. I did the biggest thing I thought I could do when I auditioned for American Idol. Let's go big. Early on, you'd say, I think I should go for this really cool, like, edgy cut. I'm like, do it, babe. He encouraged me to get a Carol Brady. <laughs> Today at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. Stacy Lee, she's on your side. Apple Valley News Now first alert weather. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. The Bend County Fairgrounds is planning remodels for three areas in an effort to bring more entertainment options to the region. Apple Valley News Now's Monique Ledesma spoke with the fairgrounds manager about their plan changes. Manager Tom French says a remodel of the fairgrounds is needed in an effort to make hosting more events throughout the year happen. The goal is just to bring in between a, a good mix between public, private, and ticket events, and just let the community know that you know these buildings that we have back here, the beautifully remodeled buildings on the inside. We try to make it as affordable as possible, and just and just give the community a place to either either come to an event and enjoy it, or if they're interested in hosting an event. If you take a look behind me, you can see the Benton Fairgrounds Rodeo building. Now, manager says that they plan on remodeling the building so it's more modernized. In addition, they'll also be remodeling the bleachers area so there'll be more seating available. The rodeo building and bleachers isn't the only thing that is in the plans to change. French says he is also looking into changing the parking area. The idea for the parking lot is kind of where we're standing right now. Um, it would be this, all this parking behind me would go, go and reach all the way up to the buildings. There'd be some new spots and some new lights um, in the existing kind of gravel parking lot out there in the front of the grounds. Um, just, just make it more open and easier for people. French says these kinds of changes are necessary before the full building remodels can take place. Once we get through that, that kind of planning um, and, and design phase, then we have to present it to the Board of County Commissioners. French says once approved by the board, the fairgrounds will be able to set a date of when they'll start the remodeling process. Reporting in Kennewick, Monique Ledesma, Apple Valley News Now. Thank you, Monique. And some events on the fairgrounds list is more music festivals and big crowd events. Coming up on Good Morning Northwest, the nation's top U.S. intelligence leaders have a new warning about the cyber threat posed by China. And information from U.S. officials indicates that the leadership of Iran is concerned about the actions of some of its proxy groups in the Middle East. After a car accident, the road to recovery can get quite expensive. An ambulance ride to the hospital, helicopter evacuation, physical therapy, the list is endless. Will the insurance company pay for all of this? And what about your pain and suffering? If your group or organization would like to receive job postings, contact our Human Resources Department, 509-735-8369 to request notices. Apple Valley News Now open positions can be viewed on our website, applevalleynewsnow.com. Meet David Silva of Athena, Oregon. You're doing something the others aren't doing. He's an Apple Valley News Now viewer. The folks, the faces that you have, they're friendly, they're easy to listen to. And a Stacy Lee fan. Stacy Lee covers the whole basin. It's nice to turn on the TV. Good Friday evening to you. And know that we're going to hear the weather of Walla Walla and Pendleton. From the blues to the Cascades. First alert weather with Stacy Lee. She's there for all of us. On your side. If you're a high school senior, listen up. This message is for you. A college education is expensive. The Molly Davis Scholarship Program can help with up to $7,500 per year. It's easy to apply. Just go to yakimarotarytrust.org and click on the Molly Davis Scholarship tab. Hundreds of Yakima County residents have achieved the dream of a higher education thanks to the Molly Davis Scholarship Program. Applications end February 27th, so apply today. How long do I have to wait? What are you waiting for? Let's go. Ten times are in trouble. Which one of you am I firing? I am truly stunned that you still work here. I love you, and I'm gonna love you forever. You're vodka tonic, sir. We need to talk about what happened. Dr. Altman is in critical condition. Are you ready for all this? 
Yeah. Welcome back to the house that Ava built. Y'all ain't missed nothing. Come on, y'all. Come on. I ate that. I consumed it. Oh, my God. Everybody move. Sexily. Shocking. You yeah. I've got to go save the school. Well, at this point, you're probably asking yourself, how did you get elected to the state senate? Yes. You guys missed a lot. Abby. This back. That's right. I'm back, y'all. Yes. Yes. Welcome back. Next Extra, we kick off a month of new A-list interviews with the cast of our guy. I know your friends are Tom Cruise. Plus, it's Taylor Bowl time. I mean, Super Bowl time. Next Extra. Tonight at 7.30 on Apple Valley News Now. Traveling at freeway speed naturally increases your need to pay attention to road conditions. Merging, lane changes, exiting and entering the freeway require special skill. So stay alert and never text while driving. E.T. and Extra, tonight at 7 on Apple Valley News Now. Right now on Good Morning Northwest, the director of the FBI says hackers linked to the Chinese government are targeting critical U.S. infrastructure, preparing to cause real-world harm to Americans. Meanwhile, U.S. officials believe there are signs that Iranian leadership is nervous about some of the actions of its proxy groups in Iraq, Syria, and Yemen. And meteorologist Tiffany Savona has your full weather forecast. Good Morning Northwest starts right now. This is Apple Valley News Now. Good Morning Northwest on your side. Good morning and thank you for joining us for Good Morning Northwest. I'm Jessica Jalal. The time is 6.30 on Thursday, February 1st. Happy first day of February. We're going to start things off by checking in on your weather forecast with meteorologist Tiffany Savona. And Tiffany, happy first day of February. Are we going to get more rain or any fog? You know, we don't have a lot of fog out there, Jessica. There's a little bit across the Yakima Valley. The rest of the region seeing a little bit of light rain this morning. So the rain and the fog continues on this Thursday, but things will improve as we head into tomorrow and certainly the weekend. Roads are wet in Richland at this hour where we're seeing light rain, 43 degrees, official sunrise at 720. So we have about 50 minutes to go here. And that light rain continues for the Tri-City, down into Hermiston, Hanford, over toward Walla Walla, Dayton and Connell. You can see this activity moving in from south to north. Not as much action across the Yakima or the Kittitas Valley, and that is where some patchy dense fog has developed. So visibility has dropped below a quarter of a mile in Prosser and Yakima. So along I-82 there, use caution, be alert for some rapidly changing visibility if you're about to head out the door. The rest of you will probably just need the windshield wipers. It's 51 now in Walla Walla. Keep in mind, an hour or two ago, we were close to 60. So winds have shifted more out of the west there, ushering in this cooler air. It's 43 in the Tri-Cities, 39 in Prosser, and 41 in Toppenish. Here's the bus stop forecast. Make sure the kids have the rain gear today. Temperatures in the 40s as you're dropping them off to school or they're going outside to catch the bus. Recess 47 and as they're heading home, temperatures should top out for some of us in the lower 50s. But a cooler weekend is on the way, but it's looking drier while the full forecast on your seven day coming up in a little bit. Jessica, back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. Now to a new warning about U.S. national security and the danger posed by China. The FBI director told Congress yesterday that China is looking to wreak havoc by using cyber attacks to target U.S. water and power systems. And that's not all he's warning about. ABC's Andrea Fuji has more. China's multi-pronged assault on our national and economic security make it the defining threat of our generation. A stark new warning from U.S. intelligence leaders about the cyber threat posed by China. Let's be clear, cyber threats to our critical infrastructure represent real-world threats to our physical safety. FBI Director Christopher Wray and other officials warning lawmakers that the country's transportation systems, water treatment plants, and electrical grids are vulnerable to hackers working on behalf of the Chinese government. Telecommunications going down so people can't use their cell phone. People start getting sick from polluted water. Trains get derailed. Air traffic control system, port control systems are malfunctioning. This is truly an everything, everywhere, all at once scenario. 
The Justice Department has revealed it recently dismantled a Chinese hacking group called Volt Typhoon that hijacked hundreds of home and small business routers to target infrastructure. Former White House Cyber Response Chief Jeff Green says China is looking to create chaos. The goal of these intrusions is largely to create that societal panic, and we need to make sure that we are prepared not to panic. We take the power away from our adversaries when we can take a punch, roll with it, and move forward. Director Ray says China's hackers outnumber FBI cyber personnel 50 to 1. He wants more funding to fight the threat. But experts say the American people can also do their part. These intrusions are happening because of fundamental flaws in devices that these critical infrastructure services are using. So you as an individual can't do a lot to protect the critical infrastructure, but you can help protect, prepare yourself. When President Biden and Chinese President Xi Jinping met in November, President Jinping assured Biden China would not interfere in the upcoming presidential election. FBI Director Christopher Wray testified he'll believe that when he sees it. There are signs that Iranian leaders are nervous about some of the actions of its proxy groups in Iraq, Syria and Yemen and may pursue a calibrated approach to avoid sparking an all out war with the United States. That's according to multiple people familiar with U.S. intelligence. Iran backed mil uh, militants have launched over 160 attacks on U.S. forces since October. But the drone attack that killed three American soldiers in Jordan last weekend were the first deaths since the attacks began. Officials citing U.S. intelligence said the drone attack worried political leadership in Tehran. They say these attacks threatened to disrupt the global economy and increase the risk of direct confrontation with the U.S. U.S. intelligence also suggests Iran is concerned that attacks from militants in Yemen on commercial shipping in the Red Sea could upset the economic interests of both China and India, two of Iran's key allies. The Biden administration is weighing options for how to respond to the recent attack in Jordan. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, we'll meet a Las Vegas jewelry maker who says her partnership with the NFL for the Super Bowl is changing her life. Taking a look at Skycam, we're still waiting on Mr. Sun to make an appearance. And it's 43 degrees out, but we'll have more with Tiffany Savona in her full alert forecast when we come back. A ski area on the Idaho-Montana border at Fly the Northwest, Tuesday at 6. Want to test drive U.S. Cellular's network free for 30 days? Here we go. Hey, I wonder if U.S. Cellular lets me stream in my... Rec room. Yep, it's working. Test drive U.S. Cellular's award-winning network free for 30 days. Save thousands on the new Revolutionary Swim Spa at a one-time sale. Friday through Sunday. Benton County Fairgrounds, Kennewick. Exercise with low impact. Swim the entire year and stay in shape. Teach your kids to swim. Unwind and save thousands. Avoid the expense and maintenance involved with a pool. Swim, exercise, and relax in your new aquatic exercise swim spa. Installation and one day only. New 2024 inventory. 18-month interest-free financing. Millions of dollars of inventory must be sold. Benton County Fairgrounds, Kennewick. Free admission. Free parking. Call 833-SPA-SALE. Meet David Silva of Athena, Oregon. You're doing something the others aren't doing. He's an Apple Valley News Now viewer. The folks, the faces that you have, they're friendly, they're easy to listen to. And a Stacy Lee fan. Stacy Lee covers the whole basin. It's nice to turn on the TV. Good Friday evening to you. And know that we're going to hear the weather of Walla Walla and Pendleton. From the blues to the Cascades, first alert weather with Stacy Lee. She's there for all of us. On your side. Everybody has a beginning story. I couldn't do this without my sister. <laughs> this is why we do this show. You make dreams come true. Home is where the dream starts. Anything is possible when you have the courage to chase your dreams. American Idol is where the dream takes off. It's going to make people stop and watch. I did the biggest thing I thought I could do when I auditioned for American Idol. Let's go big. How long do I have to wait? What are you waiting for? Let's go. Ten times are in trouble. Which one of you am I firing? I am truly stunned that you still work here. I love you, and I'm gonna love you forever. You're vodka tonic, sir. We need to talk about what happened. 
Dr. Altman is in critical condition. Are you ready for this? Today, we seize the day. Because at U.S. Cellular, you can get an epic Samsung Galaxy S24 with Galaxy AI. Even me? Look under your chair. That's right. Get the Samsung Galaxy S24 on us. U.S. Cellular. Order in the court. <laughs> Just tell the truth. Everybody's telling the truth. This is a weird case. What y'all want? <laughs> you must be out your mind. <laughs> You a gangster? Guilty. I've gotten over the flattery part. I'm here to do business. I am a judge. <laughs> it sounds funny when I say it. Welcome back to Good Morning Northwest. The Super Bowl is changing one small business owner's life in Las Vegas. Wilanya Vong Veritez makes jewelry out of polymer clay. She's only been doing it since 2019, but her work is so popular, the NFL chose it for an exclusive line of Super Bowl merchandise. It's something the league does with local businesses in every Super Bowl host city, and hers is one of three businesses chosen. Vongs Veritas created a line of earrings and keychains for the game in colors inspired by Las Vegas. She says the bright colors come from the desert sunset and the gold from her Thai heritage. I think we are capable of more than we think for ourselves. So if the most important thing is to just try and, and have the audacity to try and see where it leads you. It could lead you to somewhere magical like the Super Bowl. <laughs> Her company is called Love Hand and Heart, and her merchandise will be sold at an NFL-sponsored retail event. And after that, it goes for sale online. Up next on Good Morning Northwest, the U.S. Department of Agriculture came to town to talk about how to make Washington crops more competitive in the market. Riley Fitzgerald takes us to wine country this morning to the Washington State University Prosser Research and Extension Center. Taking a look at SkyCam, it looks like it's lighting up a tiny bit, but we're still waiting on that sun to come out. Meteorologist Tiffany Savona has your first alert full forecast, and we'll be back after this. Press them or pass them? Come on, come on, come on, come on! Stop, stop! Just look back. I'm going to <laughs> press Whoa. my <laughs> you Press your luck tonight on ABC. Here comes Eli Young Band, live in concert. Crazy girl, you know that I love you. Friday, February 16th, Legends Casino Hotel, Tompanish. Eli Young Band. Cause love it, you on the sidewalk in your new Buy your tickets now at Ticketmaster at Legends Casino Gift Shop. Don't miss Eli Young Band at Legends Casino Hotel, Tompanish. This is our city. When you're not strong. We're here to protect people. This crew attacked our people in their homes. I need to see this through. We have a new family of brothers and sisters. Remember that. Somebody to At Bruce Heating and Air, your comfort is our business. With over 30 years of professional HVAC experience for residential and commercial properties, you can rest assured your heating and air system is in good hands. In addition to providing quality heating, air conditioning, ventilation, and installation services, Bruce Heating and Air also houses a full-service sheet metal fabrication shop. Now through March 31st, receive rebates up to $1,600 off on a new Daikin Fit System and thermostat when you finance through Bruce Heating and Air. Terms and conditions apply. See dealer for details. In the heart of Tri-Cities Wine Country, you'll find the Goose Ridge Richland Tasting Room. Located in the center of our vineyards is an opportunity to enjoy life through wines, hard ciders, Monson Ranch spirits, light bites, and live music at Goose Ridge. More than you'd expect, more than just a winery. Next live, Catherine O'Hara. Early on, you'd say, I think I should go for this really cool, like, edgy cut. I'm like, do it, babe. He encouraged me to get a Carol Brady haircut. <laughs> Today at 9 on Apple Valley News Now. 
why buy a mattress from Mattress Depot USA? Low prices. Every day, we beat any competitor's price. Selection? All sizes and brands like Sealy, Stearns & Foster, Tempur-Pedic. Customer service. Our sleep specialists average 10 years in the industry. Check out our reviews. Comfort guarantee? 120 nights worth. Same day delivery. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. Local? Born here, live here. Come see us today. Low prices every day. Mattress Depot USA. Next DT. Music's biggest stars still chasing Grammy gold. I thought it was a joke. Plus, only we're on set of Night Court for the Big Bang Theory reunion. Max E.T. E. Tonight at 7 on Apple Valley News Now. The best way to end your day. That is good TV. Friends, tonight at 11.05. From Apple Valley News Now, first alert weather with Tiffany Savona. Good morning and welcome back. It is February 1st, so let's talk about some averages on the first day and also on the last day of February. February 1st, our average high 44 degrees, our average low 28 degrees, and we are going to be above average today. And by the end of the month, our average high jumps to 54 degrees. That'll be nice. Our average low really doesn't move too much, 29. And we just came off a wet January and December and January typically are wettest months here across portions of the Pacific Northwest. For the month of February, the average precipitation for the entire month is about just over a half an inch. And we have a little bit of rain in the forecast today. In fact, rain is still falling out there in the Tri-Cities, Hermiston, and over toward the foothills of the Blues. So just north of Pendleton, but in between Walla Walla and Dayton. Dayton, it's a little bit steadier at this time. But all in all, rain is on the light side. Roads are still wet in Richland. Official sunrise 720 and sunset is now after 5 o'clock. How about that? Where we are not seeing the rain, which is across the Yakima and Kittitas Valleys, that is where some patchy dense fog has developed. So Yakima and Prosser visibility down below a quarter of a mile. So be alert for some rapidly changing visibility if you're traveling to those areas or if you're traveling out of those areas this morning and take it easy on the roads. 43 right now in the Tri-Cities. Walla Walla, you have dropped to 51 as your wind has shifted direction. More westerly now, 54 in Pendleton. It's 45 in Dayton, 38 in Prosser, and 36 degrees in Ellensburg. Here's the big picture. This boundary moving through, switching our winds, and pushing the rain chances a little bit farther east today. Remember yesterday, the better chances were across the Yakima Valley and the Tri-Cities. Well, today it'll be Tri-Cities and the foothills of the Blues. And you can see that here with our computer model. And this rain is going to be on the light side, just like it was yesterday. Not going to add up to much in the rain gauge, but it could persist on and off throughout the day. So it's going to be a damp, dreary day once again with high temperatures climbing into the upper 40s and lower 50s, so a little bit milder compared to yesterday. We'll take it 52 in the Tri-Cities, 53 for your high in Hanford, 52 in Toppenish, 54 in Pendleton, and 58 in Walla Walla. Here is your forecast for tonight. The showers start to diminish in coverage overall, maybe a few showers here and there, not much out there as the moisture levels start to come down. Temperatures drop into the mid and upper 30s, so everyone's still above the freezing mark, which isn't bad considering our average low is in the upper 20s. Tomorrow morning, maybe a few showers across the mid-Columbia. That's it. And over toward Walla Walla, I think we're drying things out for the most part on your Friday. Mostly cloudy, though, maybe a few breaks here and there during the afternoon. High temperatures tomorrow in the Tri-Cities, about 50 degrees, which is still above average. 46 on Saturday, 45 on Sunday. So more seasonable for this time of year this weekend, but not bad with those lows close to freezing. Yakima, just a couple of showers possible during the first half of the day, and then we're just cloudy. 50 degrees tomorrow, 47 on Saturday, 45 on Sunday. Walla Walla, scattered showers on and off throughout the entire day, and we could see some light rain tomorrow as well. Trending drier for the weekend. Hermiston, showers possible, 53, and then more for. 40s starting tomorrow and lasting into your Saturday and Sunday. Let's take a look at your Schweitzer ski report as the sun is getting closer to coming above the horizon. We're getting a little bit brighter out there, a little bit of a better picture. All is quiet 
at the Ski Mountain this morning. However, we could see some light rain unfortunately fall throughout the day today at Schweitzer Mountain. 34 degrees, no new snow. However, we could see several more inches of snow as we head into the weekend. Fingers crossed for all of you ski lovers. As we take a look a little bit farther south and west, if you're going to Bluewood today, you could see a mix of rain and snow, 41 degrees. No new snow, unfortunately, and we're really not going to see any new snow today or into the weekend. Same story if you're going to White Pass, 36 degrees, a little bit colder there with that chance for rain and snow. Jessica, back to you. And now it's Tiffany's Ski Report, and if you like skiing, you'll want to enter to win this great prize package of two nights and four lift tickets to Schweitzer Mountain. Just visit applevalleynewsnow.com and click on contest, and soon you could be on the slopes of one of the Pacific Northwest's great ski resorts. We'll choose a winner at random after February 15th, so get your entry in today. The U.S. Department of Agriculture Undersecretary and the Director of the Washington State Department of Agriculture visited Prosser yesterday to highlight investments into the specialty crops industry and to meet with stakeholders. Apple Valley News Now's Riley Fitzgerald joins us live in studio to tell us what went down. Good morning, Riley. Good morning, Jessica. This week, the USDA announced nearly $73 million available in funding for this year's Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. I was in Prosser and got the chance to speak with Undersecretary Jenny Lester Moffett and the Washington State Department of Agriculture Director Derek Sanderson. The United States and Washington State Departments of Agriculture traveled to Prosser for outreach on its specialty crop competitiveness initiative. So it's apples, it's hops, it's pears, it's cherries, it's um, grapes. The specialty crop block grant program is bringing close to $73 million nationwide to improve the field and increase competitiveness of those products. The meeting happened at the WSU Prosser Research and Extension Center the WSDA's land-grant university. In what's called the birthplace of the Washington wine industry, there's more than just research on grapes happening. Yeah, we expect to hear how Washington State University, which is again our land grant, has, has been able to, to use specialty crop uh, block grant dollars to be able to do very, very important research and, uh, and um, on a number of wide variety of different topics, but, but basically um, all of them support our ag industry. And, uh, and again, we were, we're hoping to hear how, how that's going, how well they're doing with, uh, with the uh, specialty crop dollars they receive. The officials from the Departments of Agriculture were there to gauge what the challenges are right now in agriculture and how the departments can advance and support the industry across the state and nation, according to the Undersecretary with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Jenny Lester Moffitt. How we can better invest and partner with the agriculture industry, and that includes researchers, that includes, of course, the farmers, that includes, of course, also the consumers, right? Out of that nearly 73 million, more than 4.8 million is coming to Washington. Director Derek Sanderson with the Washington State Department of Ag says this state is noted for high quality products and exports. And that's valued overseas in terms of the you know people wanting to buy Washington products because if it's Washington, there's a, a you know reasonable assurance, good assurance that it's going to be high quality. And I think you know as as they continue to do to to farm to do their work uh, in the community that um, they'll be able to see the um, the improvements we're making through through research. The departments want to see, hearing from researchers, farmers, and consumers, how this grant is impacting research and how they can better meet the industry's needs to grow domestically and abroad while bringing more dollars and value back to local communities. Specialty crops include fruits, nuts, veggies, and flora. The two officials also toured the WSU Prosser Research and Extension Center to see these projects. Reporting for Apple Valley News Now, I'm Riley Fitzgerald. I'll send it back to Jessica. Thank you, Riley. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with the morning sprint and a final check on your forecast. But first, a look at what's ahead on Good Morning America. In this morning's GMA First Look, one-on-one -on -one with the U.S. CEO of Walmart. This is an announcement that we're really excited about. The world's biggest retailer announcing it will open 150 locations in the U.S. in the next five years. The first time it will add new stores since 2021. So it's really about providing flexibility for the consumer. 
Walmart also making a big investment in its workforce, awarding store managers higher pay and stock grants that could bring their salaries to $400,000 a year. It just makes sense that um, given the size business, they're managing super centers like I did 25 years ago, and they're managing an e-commerce business. And that's not all. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on what other changes are coming to Walmarts across the country. With your GMA First Look, I'm Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, New York. COVID-19. I'm not waiting. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid is an oral treatment for adults with mild to moderate COVID-19 and a high risk factor for it becoming severe. It does not prevent COVID-19. My symptoms are mild now, but I'm not risking it. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid must be taken within the first five days of symptoms and help stop the virus from multiplying in your body. Taking Paxlovid with certain medicines can lead to serious or life-threatening side effects or affect how it or other medicines work, including hormonal birth control. It's critical to tell your doctor about all the medicines you take because certain tests or changes in their dosage may be needed. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems, HIV-1, are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeed. Don't take Paxlovid if you're allergic to Nermatrelvir, Ritonavir, or any of its ingredients. Serious side effects can include allergic reactions, some severe, like anaphylaxis, and liver problems. These are not all the possible side effects, so talk to your doctor. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Ask your doctor today. Now, the morning sprint. Welcome back. Time right now is 654. We'll get to your first alert forecast in a moment. But first, a look at this morning's top stories. An hours long standoff in Benton County ended in one man's arrest. Nobody was hurt, but authorities say the man they arrested was wanted by a couple of different agent agencies. Around 3:30 yesterday afternoon, authorities were called to a home off of East Jacobs Road Northeast for reports of a man possibly armed with a gun. Authorities say they had a tip that a man who had gotten away from them last weekend after crashing a car was at the home. The man did have a gun, but he surrendered. He's facing charges for eluding and possession of a firearm. A robbery yesterday afternoon led to a pursuit in West Richland. According to West Richland Police, the suspect arrived at a home on Gross Cup Boulevard and North 62nd Avenue, claiming he was supposed to work on the home. Officers say the man allegedly hurt an elderly resident as he pushed his way into the home and allegedly fled with personal items. Two canines were used to search and find the suspect, who officers say had numerous items belonging to the victim. The victim received medical attention but is doing well. Yakima County Prosecutor Joe Brusick said he will not be charging the man who shot and killed another man at a dog park last February. 22-year-old Daniel Ortega was killed at Randall Dog Park on February 5th last year. According to Brusick, Ortega was acting erratically at the park, shouting at people and was later found to have taken several drugs. Witnesses reported seeing Ortega begin to argue with the man who was at the park with his child. Brusick says the man then took out a gun and shot and killed Ortega. According to Brusick, he believes the man was acting in self-defense. <clears throat> Here's one last look at your forecast. We do have cloudy skies in Richland and a little bit of patchy light rain at this time. Roads are still wet, but visibility not an issue this morning, at least in the Tri-Cities. That's not the case across the Yakima Valley. We do have that light rain impacting your morning commute in the Tri-Cities up toward Connell, down toward Hermiston and over toward Dayton and Walla Walla. Where we do not have the rain, we have the patchy, dense fog, as is the case in Prosser and Yakima. Visibility down below a quarter of a mile at time. So use caution if you're going to those areas or leaving those areas this morning. Temperatures kind of all over the map. It's 38 in Yakima. It's 42 in the Tri-Cities, 38 in Prosser. But look out toward the east, 53 in Pendleton and 50 degrees in Walla Walla. And Walla Walla was close to 60 about two hours ago. Here's your seven-day forecast. Showers will continue on and off the Throughout the day today. Not as much rain as yesterday and it will be better concentrated from the Tri-Cities and points off to the east along the foothills of the Blues. Tomorrow morning maybe a stray shower for the Tri-Cities and over toward Walla Walla but the rest of us dry, mainly dry throughout the day and then the weekend is looking drier with highs in the middle 40s. Jessica?